What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video and I'm going to be talking about Willian's proposed free transfer to join up with old Chelsea boss Maurizio Sarri at the old lady Juventus. Injury news with players like Reese James, hudson Adoy, and Golo Kante and Matteo Kovacic's return to the side and the inclusion of young Billy Gilmore into this Chelsea squad, which is actually flush with midfielders but there's a lot of people that believe in him and he's a talented player. So a lot to talk about, but before we do get into today's video, I want to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon to keep it locked because I upload every single day. And if you want to help me out, please do like this video. So let's start on the young 18 year old Scottish lad, Billy Gilmore. Now he had a really good pre-season, a couple of very impressive games, but everyone would have assumed that maybe he would have stayed with the development squad or even better, gone out on a loan and got some first team football somewhere. But no, he was sort of pulled out of the development training, started training with the first team squad, and has already made his Premier League debut in the 2-2 against Sheffield United. Now, whether you agree with that substitution or not is kind of beside the point. The point is the coaching team and Frank Lampard believe in Billy Gilmore. For me, I always thought he looks kind of small, he looks kind of slight, but that has always hamstrung Chelsea in the past, saying players are too small and then they go off somewhere and be amazing and then Chelsea look stupid. The fact is, Billy Gilmore is an incredibly talented and technical young player and Pat Nevin, ex-Chelsea player and now pundit slash broadcaster, believes he will have a big part to play for Chelsea this season. It's a strange one because Chelsea are flush for really, really good midfielders and for him not to go on loan and get guaranteed first team football seems kind of peculiar but the interesting thing is that Billy Gilmore is an incredibly flexible player. Now this is kind of strange for me considering he's so petite but he can play in where Jorginho plays at that deep line playmaker role. He can play on either side of a diamond. He can play as a number 10. He can play as a number 8 and it looks like he can occupy the wing spaces as well. Very very talented and skillful technical player and it looks like he's got no problem playing in the speed of the Premier League. So he looks like he'll be a useful asset to be an incisive, quick and direct player, which kind of fits the mold of Frank Lampard's Chelsea down to a T. Maybe you don't expect young Billy Gilmore to be starting Premier League games unless he just scores like some hat tricks or something amazing. But certainly in both domestic cups for Chelsea Football Club, expect to see him start, maybe rotate it in and maybe come off the bench more in Premier League games. Great news for the youngster. All right then, let's talk about some injury news. Starting with Mateo Kovacic, he withdrew from the Croatian squad because he's got an inflamed Achilles. Now, this set off red flags for a lot of Chelsea fans because they had enough of Achilles injuries for the moment. But it does look like or sound like there's no rupture or tear in the Achilles. Like I said, it's just inflamed and to prevent more aggravation, he hasn't gone with the international team and he'll remain at Cobham to do rehabilitation and hopefully Chelsea fans can expect Mateo Kovacic to return after the international break and he's been excellent so far this season, so that is superb news. And there's more good news in regards to injury updates. Reese James, Callum hudson Doy, and N'Golo Kante and Antonio Rudiger all look to be returning after the international break. This could suddenly be a new look Chelsea. Now, in terms of immediate integration, you could probably expect only N'Golo Kante to slot straight back in because he's that good a plug and play player and also he's already done some drills for Frank Lampard. You'd imagine the next player to slot in after him would be German international and central defender Antonio Rudiger. Rudiger has already played some games for the development squad where Frank Lampard has attended and watched and I think he's been impressed enough with him so his fitness is top top tier. And due to Chelsea's recent defensive problems you can imagine Antonio Rudiger will be reintegrated quite quickly. When it comes to players like Reese James and Callum hudson Adoy, sure they're in injuries might be better and they might be playing and training and feel fit but feeling fit and being ready for Frank Lampard's actual you know tactical game and being able to deploy the high high press and run around for 90 minutes might be a different thing. Frank's already joked about how yes Callum is looking good but he wants him to run a lot and he wants him to be completely ready for his type of game. So it's really anyone's guess of when those guys will return to the side but certainly a player like Reese James is massively needed because Azpilicueta has played so many games these last three or four seasons and looks overcooked for the moment and needs a rest and everyone knows 
the benefits and positives of Reese James's game and what that could bring to Frank Lampard's Chelsea side. So, generally all positives and after the international break's gone and the domestic season's been brought back in, slowly you can imagine players to roll out back into this Chelsea side that will look to strengthen it and increase the performance levels by a lot. The only player that really will be out for a lot longer is Ruben Loftus-Cheek and people can expect him to return to this Chelsea side around Christmas time approximately. Alright then, let's get on to the main event, the really interesting one. Willian, the player that has split Chelsea opinions for a long time now. Willian has been at the club for a good few years now, I think he's one of the longest serving players with Azpilicueta. Now, Willian has not extended his contract, it was rumoured he was going to do one or two years, which made sense for the club if they wanted to sell him in the summer, and it made sense for Willian to get a bumper contract and, you know, maybe feel a bit more self-worth in terms of being transferred or just remaining at the club. But it does look like Pedro's the preferred senior winger, and now it looks like Mason Mount can play on the wing. Obviously, Chelsea have both Pulisic and Hudson are doing. So Willian will feel like maybe his time setting at Chelsea, certainly that's what happened with David Luiz when he moved to Arsenal, and you can imagine Willian feels the same. So Willian's contract ends in the summer, which means in January he can negotiate with a new club. And that new club has been rumoured to be Juventus. Shock horror, right? Juventus, at the old lady, they are the kings of the free transfers. Just this summer, they've got Adrian Rabiot, and Aaron Ramsey on a free transfer. And they have an illustrious history of getting free transfers over the last few years. Now, does this make sense for Willian, Chelsea and Juventus? Firstly, it does make sense for Chelsea. They would have liked to make some money off him and obviously the last couple of years, whether it's true or not, Willian had been rumoured for some big money moves to Barcelona. 50 million pounds. I think that rumour went up to 70 million pounds, which just seemed crazy that Chelsea didn't cash in on the Brazilian if that rumour was true. And now it looks like he could be going on a free, and that's not very Chelsea. Chelsea, especially with Marina Granoskaya at the helm doing the finances, always try and make the most amount of money they can from transfers. Just look at when Diego Costa went. Chelsea actually made a, like a 20 million pound profit on Diego Costa. They sold him for like 50 plus million when they knew he was outed from the squad. Conte would never play him and he said he only wanted to join one club in Atletico Madrid. I was thinking, oh God, Chelsea will be lucky to get 20 million for him. Somehow, they get an amazing fee for him. Granoskaya is a great negotiator, so that makes this whole Willian thing seem kind of strange. So it won't suit Chelsea financially, but it will suit Chelsea in terms of getting a sort of maybe slightly over the hill winger that splits opinion out of the club for the new youngsters. It certainly suits Willian for a few reasons. Firstly, he gets a sign-on fee at Juventus, which will probably be quite a lot. He gets to team up with old coach Maurizio Sarri, which I think actually liked Willian quite a lot. Certainly, he played him a lot. He'll get to play in an amazing team with the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and probably win loads of titles, certainly domestic titles in Italy. And he'll be playing in a league that might suit him a little bit more. Willian's a very creative player, and if the league slowed down ever so slightly, I know that's a sort of conventional perspective of Serie A but I do think the league will suit him a lot better and of course in Italy players play for a bit longer they don't see a 30 year old a 31 year old to be that old they'll give him probably a four-year contract where Chelsea were considering a 12-month extension or something like that. So it definitely suits Willian for a multitude of reasons, that transfer. And obviously it suits Juventus because they signed yet another decent player on the free that will serve them well. When it comes to Willian's exit for Chelsea fans, it will not necessarily split opinion on his departure. I think probably the majority of Chelsea fans would be like, yeah, okay, it's time for him to go. Um, he gets a lot of grief online, which I think is probably unfair. He's been a great servant for Chelsea. He's liked, he's enjoyed playing for Chelsea. He's wanted to play for Chelsea. He chose Chelsea over Tottenham Hotspur. Sure, Willian underperforms in terms of goals and assists domestically, but he remains one of Chelsea's most creative players. Last season, uh, outputting the most key passes in the side. He just does, I don't want to say high profile mistakes, but he's in the spotlight when a passage of play breaks down. And of course, the last season and a half, He's been hitting the first man on corners every single time. But people should look back on Willian's time at Chelsea positively and the titles he won with Chelsea. Both people from different sides of the coin with Willian, they should all be thankful for his time at Chelsea and be thankful that now young, talented, 
fast the wingers can come through the system, the squad, the team. All right, guys, that's it for my Chelsea news video today. I hope you've enjoyed the content. If you have, please do like this video. And remember, subscribe to this channel if you are new. But let me know your thoughts as well. Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on the injured players. Let me know your thoughts on Willian. Young Billy Gilmore, can you see him featuring in such a congested midfield at Chelsea? Express your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. And remember, you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. I'm gonna keep it moving ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed the video. So you enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back.